In previous videos, we looked at linear interpolation and extrapolation, where we said we had, in that instance, graphical data, but now let's look at it in tabular, values for x, and we had values for y. So let's just say we had an x of 30 and a y of 100, an x of 50 and a y of 175. And the question said, what is the value of y if we have a value of x of 45? So linear interpolation was a way of finding out what was that unknown y value. Extrapolation was when we had, let's just say, 60. What was the y value for that? We're now going to look at a more complex scenario. In this example, we still have the values as shown above, but now I tell you that y is a pressure, or sorry, is a enthalpy at one bar, and you have additional information such that we also have the enthalpy at five bar. And the question now states, what is the x value for a y which is sitting at 2 bar? So remember, we have this value here, and let's just write that in as 150. These are very random numbers. They actually mean nothing. But the question is, what is the value that we have sitting here at 2 bar? So in the same way that we did before, we would again do interpolation, but now in this direction. A more complicated example is now going to be where we asked, what is the enthalpy of 2 bar or at 2 bar for an x value of 45. So let's just write this as temperature as an example. So temperature of 45 degrees Celsius and a y value of 2 bar. What is the enthalpy at that value? Before we start, maybe let's just draw this graphically. What is actually happening here? And let's fill in a value here of 280 for our final given value at 5 bar and 50 degrees Celsius. So here we have the graph of temperature versus enthalpy. And we had that at 30 degrees Celsius, so this is not going to be to scale there, let's just say that is 30 degrees Celsius. We said that at pressure of 1 bar, we had a value of 100 enthalpy, so there we had our first point in the top left-hand corner. The temperature of 30, we also had a pressure of 150, so this was for pressure of 5 bar. And at 50 degrees Celsius, we had at one bar it was 175 so it's slightly higher and then at a pressure of 250 we had 280 so it's a value much higher so what we now have is we could somehow get a function or if we knew a function value we would be able to draw some sort of function connecting these points like this however we've been asked what happens if we have a temperature value that is somewhere in between and it was at a pressure somewhere in between. So strictly speaking, there should be a line connecting all of the different values at a constant pressure. So what that means is we need to somehow interpolate such that we can get the value that is somewhere in the middle. The way that we are going to do that is we are going to interpolate twice. First, we are going to interpolate between the constant temperature values So we would go for the green and we would interpolate the same way we did before such that we get the point in green on the left and then we would get the point in the green on the right. From those two we would then interpolate across and we would get the value in the middle. Looking at the values of the table we would start at a constant temperature of 30 so we could interpolate between 100 and 150 to get our value at that point at 2 bar and the same thing between 175 and 280. From that, we would then interpolate between a point to get our middle section, our middle value. We could just as easily have interpolated across the 100 and 175 and the 150 and the 280. So we interpolate across those two values. And then from that, we could interpolate across the middle to get the middle value. Please note, however, if you had tried to interpolate diagonally, this would have been wrong. The reason this diagonal is wrong is wrong is because we have function values here that are related to a, either a constant temperature, sorry, either a constant temperature, which are constant temperatures up and down, or a constant pressure, which is along this line that's making a very messy section here. So that's why we stay at constant temperature and then at constant pressure. If you had to interpolate diagonally, we're looking at a change in temperature and pressure at the same time. So we're taking two different variables into account. And we are, oh, sorry, and we are also ignoring these endpoints, 
which need to be taken into account to make this more accurate. So you can again use the same linear interpolation equation that we derived in previous videos. You can also, however, combine all of these into a single equation, which I will not derive, but it is given below.